to be back. Right now, we're waiting to hear if there will be a recount as the state Supreme Court election results are too close to call. I said with Satya Rhodes Conway defeating current Mayor Paul Soglin, how the two plan to move forward with the transition immediately. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning and thanks for joining us for News 3 Now This Morning on this Wednesday, April 3rd. I'm Josh Breider. Danica's off today and we'll join Leah in just a few minutes. We start in the Weather Center this yeah, morning. Because Beautiful look. sunshine. Sure, the sunrise shot, I should say. No sunshine yet. but <laughs> Not quite yet, but it's nice to see the sun coming up this morning. Skies are, in fact, clear across all of southern Wisconsin. Clouds cleared late in the day yesterday, and that sets us up for kind of a cool start this morning. Here's a look at weather track. You'll notice just a few flurries flying in the far northern parts of our viewing area. Those will continue to fall apart and track due east through the day today. So no major precipitation in our forecast through the daytime hours. I do have rain, though, back in the area tonight. Temperatures are still dropping. We're down to 31. I think when I came into work just a couple of hours ago, it was almost 40. So we have lost uh, quite a few degrees in the last couple of hours. Clear skies, though, will mean for a quick warm up. Temperatures will quickly climb through the 40s back to the mid 50s this afternoon. Enjoy the sunshine this morning because clouds will return for the second part of the day. Now look at your first alert traffic maps this morning. Pretty quiet still on the Beltline. No major issues to talk about just yet or in the downtown areas. No accidents across southern Wisconsin. So those major routes into the city are still traveling at posted speeds. Let's hope that stays the same throughout yeah, the rest of the morning. Some good news well. to start the morning. Good yeah. to have that sunshine there too. Yep, don't forget the sunglasses. All right, Hattie, thank you. Lee, over to you. All right, thank you, Josh. In election news this morning, Judge Brian Hagedorn is declaring victory in a state Supreme Court race that's still too close to call. The Associated Press is reporting Judge Hagedorn does have a small lead, though it is within the margin for a recount. With 99% of precincts reporting, he's ahead of Judge Lisa Neubauer by about 5,800 votes. It was the only statewide race on the ballot yesterday, and although it's considered nonpartisan, Judge Neubauer has been backed by, by liberal groups, and Judge Hagedorn has been the conservative pick. Now, this morning we're sitting down with UW political scientist Mike Wagner to talk more about what's next in this state Supreme Court race. Good morning. Thanks for joining us again. My pleasure. So I want to start with the map of voters because you mm -hmm. had been telling us earlier it's pretty similar to the governor's race with a few notable exceptions, right? Right. It's a nonpartisan election, but the map looks a lot like the partisan map between sure. Governor, former Governor Scott Walker and now Governor Tony Evers in the last election. And so there were some differences. Kenosha County didn't come through uh, for the for new for Neubauer in this race, but really the change seems to be higher voter turnout in Waukesha County, um, Marathon County, Washington County, Fond du Lac, all which uh, favored uh, Judge Hagedorn in this case. Were you surprised? I was a little surprised at that shift in turnout and, and the lower turnout in Milwaukee. Um, Dane County really performed for Neubauer, Milwaukee County less so, especially compared to how Milwaukee County came out for the liberal candidate in 2011. Right. And so big change there. Um, and let's talk a little bit about the potential for a recount. First of all, what are the chances that Judge Neubauer asks for one? And second, what are the chances that it would even end in her favor? Well, it looks like their campaign is kind of hinting they're going to ask right. for one. As long as it's within 1%, they can ask for one. If the margin is less than 0.25%, we pay for it as taxpayers. If it's more than that but less than one, she has to pay for it. Okay, we will see what she has to say about that. And if this election had gone to Lisa Neubauer, there was a potential to set up a political swing on the court, right? That's right. If she had won or, or ends up winning, uh, the, the balance on the court would be four to three in favor of conservatives, and the next year's Supreme Court race could, could have been able to tip the balance in the other direction. But if Hagedorn holds on, then it'll be a conservative court uh, for the near future. All right. And when can we expect some answers in this election? Well, I think the canvassing won't be official for probably a week, and so we'll have an official announcement, uh, I suppose, sometime then, and then the recount uh, presumably uh, would begin. All right. The election not quite over. Mike Wagner, mm -hmm. thanks so much for breaking it down with us. My pleasure. Back to you, Josh. All right, Leah, thank you. The city of Madison also has a new mayor this morning. Satya Rhodes Conway defeated current mayor Paul Sogwin with more than 60% of the vote. She says her work will start right away. Christina Lori joins us live from downtown with more on that. Christina, good morning to you. 
Good morning, Josh. Rhodes Conway says she's meeting with outgoing Mayor Paul Soglin later this morning to get started on that transition immediately. She'll become the city's first ever openly gay mayor. Now, during her victory speech last night, she said she hopes she can prove to anyone who's ever been bullied or talked down to for being who they are, this is possible. Anything is. Soglin congratulated Rhodes Conway on the victory and said he's proud of the strides the city has made in increasing housing and improving race relations. Both candidates thank their supporters and shared a message of hope for the future of the city. I take some comfort that uh, I received good, solid support in the African American community and the Latino community uh, in this election, and I hope that that support will, will transfer to the new city council and the new mayor, and that we will continue. Uh, making the kinds of progress we have over the last eight years. Please stay engaged with city government. We will need you to hold us accountable to those goals. And we will need you to help make Madison a city where everyone has the opportunity to thrive. Soglin had backed Rhodes Conway for mayor before deciding to run for re-election himself. Rhodes Conway says she's thankful that he kept the campaign strictly about the issues. Now, as we mentioned, the two will meet this morning later here at the city county building to start with that transition immediately. This will certainly be a change for the city of Madison. Mayor Soglin has led the city on and off for the past uh, for 22 years in total besides the past eight. All right, Christina Laurie with a historic mayoral election there for Madison. Christina, thank you. Fitchburg residents will also have a new mayor soon. Alder Aaron Richardson topped incumbent Jason Gonzalez last night, getting nearly 65% of the vote. Another big question for voters yesterday, school referenda. There were a few in our area. In Sun Prairie, nearly 60% of voters agreed to borrow $164 million for a second high school to meet the city's growing population. The district's single high school is only nine years old. Sun Prairie voters also said yes to a, que a second question that would exceed revenue limits by $5 million a year to give teachers a pay raise and help maintain the new school. In DeForest, a $125 million proposal was passed in a two-part referendum. The DeForest School District asked for $54.4 million to build a new intermediate school. $60 million would go towards upgrades at the high school and the rest would go to the elementary school and improving handicap accessibility. The district also proposed exceeding revenue limits by $1.25 million to help fund that new school. Both pieces of that referendum passed. In Rock County, third time is the charm for the Milton School District. This was its third facilities referendum since 2016 after the previous two failed. This one passed by almost exactly 400 votes, giving the district $60 million to replace a pool and build additions to most of its schools. And in Clinton, it was a no for voters on a referendum to borrow $42 million for a new K-6 through building and to renovate the high school there. Today, a community health fair on Madison's west side is helping spread the word about the most ambitious medical research program of our time. We'll share where you can talk to experts about the All of Us program. And Hattie says it's a good day to play outside. We're looking forward to some sunshine this morning, but the clouds will return this afternoon. Still the mid-50s, though. Hattie will share all the details when News 3 Now This Morning continues.
Good morning from the Hattio Patio. A pretty quiet start this morning. We're coming off a nice day yesterday. A lot of clouds through the first part of the day, but we cleared out nicely for the afternoon. Take a look at high temperatures getting pretty close to 50 degrees late in the afternoon yesterday, but dropping pretty quickly this morning. We're back in the low 30s, so it is a chilly start to the day. Skies are clear though, so that is why we're a little bit colder this morning. On weather track, you won't see any clouds in the area. Just a little bit of light snow uh, impacting northwestern Wisconsin. A lot of that probably not actually hitting the ground at this point in time. No precipitation expected here across southern Wisconsin until we hit tonight. Temperatures for the area are in the 20s and low 30s. Uh, notably warmer in Milwaukee, 38 degrees, but 31 here in Madison, 32 in La Crosse, down to 27 this morning in Superior. Here's a closer look at our viewing area. People are all locations are pretty close to that freezing point. A little bit cooler through the Wisconsin River Valley where it's 28 this morning in Lone Rock and 29 in Prairie du Chien, but still 34 in Monroe and 32 in Janesville. Winds aren't a huge factor right now. They're from the west, but generally less than 10 miles an hour. Here's a look at your future track forecast model. We'll have sunshine this morning. Temperatures again starting out in the low 30s, but quickly warming up by lunchtime. Look for partly sunny skies with temps already back into the low 50s. This afternoon, clouds roll in from the south and west ahead of the next storm system, so it will turn cloudy today with highs in the mid 50s. Looks like any chances for rain, though, will likely hold off until after dark tonight. Rain showers are then expected overnight. Even a few wet snowflakes mixing in on the northern side of that precipitation with temperatures dropping back into the 30s. But as we go through the day on Thursday, those temperatures will climb back into the 40s, but on and off rain showers are expected. So if you have outdoor plans tomorrow evening, looks like there's a pretty good chance for some rain across the region. That rain comes to an end though by Friday morning. We're looking at generally pretty light amounts, less than half an inch. Those highest amounts will be right along the Wisconsin Illinois state line. Here's a look at your extended forecast then as we go through the next couple of days. We have quiet conditions to start the weekend. It'll be a little warmer with highs back in the 60s on Saturday and Sunday. Saturday will be the dry day though. Showers and a few isolated thunderstorms are possible on Sunday. Looking like a nice stretch of weather though headed into next week with highs in the 50s and nighttime lows in the upper 30s. Let's get a look at your first alert traffic maps now this morning with Josh Tim. Good morning, Josh. Yeah, so far so good on the Beltline this morning. Really nothing to slow you down yet heading east or westbound. Checking out other roads here in Dane County. There are some brake lights on John Nolan near Willie Street where construction began earlier this week. No delays showing up on campus. Volume won't be an issue at least for another half hour or so. And other routes heading into Madison, they're moving at the usual speeds with no crashes or issues. Your first alert traffic, I'm Josh Tim. All right, Josh, thank you and thank you, Hattie. Well, before the weekend of bike-worthy weather, the city of Madison will look at flood mitigation systems around some popular paths to make sure they stay above water. Fitchburg would pay for most of that $60,000 study to check the draining around the capital city, Badger, Cannonball, and Southwest paths. Following last summer's historic flooding, the city is also considering a $300,000 investment in rain gauges and flow monitoring stations. The U.S. Geological Survey will help install those systems and check the data. The funding would come from the $7.5 million allocated in the city budget for watershed and flood studies. At the state capitol today, Governor Evers will present a proclamation to recognize April as Autism Awareness Month. Evers and Senate President Roger Roth will hear from a panel of speakers with autism about their stories and state policy issues affecting families with autism. Designating April as Autism Awareness Month is an effort to increase community understanding and work toward building autism-friendly, inclusive communities. That's happening at 11 this morning in the Senate Parlor. There is an opportunity for you and your family members to get a free blood pressure screening this afternoon. The Meadowood Neighborhood Association is putting on a community health fair at the Public Library over on Madison's west side. There, you can also learn about the most ambitious medical research project of our time. You might remember, earlier this week, our Eric Franke introduced us to the All of Us program. Today, researchers from UW-Madison and nine other universities across the country will examine the health of a million participants over the next five years. 100,000 of those participants will come from right here in Wisconsin. Participants will fill out a questionnaire and provide blood and urine samples to learn more about the illnesses that affect everyone. Again, you can find out how to participate this afternoon over at Meadow Ridge Library. 
All right, 616 this morning and coming up, we'll hear from a local child psychologist about how to make sure your child knows their opinions and beliefs have value. That story and more about our BU series ahead on News 3 Now this morning. Good morning from the News 3 Now First Alert Weather Center. Taking a live look in Platteville this morning. Clear skies there, as you can see on the Queen Bee Radio Sky Cam. Beautiful start to this Wednesday morning. It's a little chilly, though. Be aware of that. Take a look at Weather Track, and you'll see that we don't have any cloud cover across the southern part of the state. Temperatures, though, have fallen into the upper 20s and low 30s. So you definitely want your jacket this morning. Sunshine early today will give way to clouds for the second part of the day. So the reverse of yesterday. High temperatures, though, will be in the middle 50s. Have a wonderful day. All right, Hattie, thank you. Our BU effort is off to a great start, so keep that going. And we also want to remind parents it can be as simple as tuning into your kids. That is according to SSM Health child psychologist Dr. Kathleen Hipke. She stresses while it's important to give kids and teens space, it's also important to check in and make sure they know their opinions, beliefs, skills, whatever it is, that they matter. We spend so much time directing kids and making sure they're on track, but it's that simple pause about let me hear from you. What do you think about this? Um, how can you contribute um, your voice? It empowers them to think about, you know, what I, what I have to offer matters. And I think that that is really a foundation for helping kids develop confidence. While social media can be a relentless source of pressure, Dr. Hipke points out it can also be a place where kids and teens can turn to for support and common ground. 
For anyone who's committed to the idea of encouraging our young people to just be themselves, please consider applying to be a BU ambassador. You'll get free resources to help spread the message. You can visit our Time for Kids page at channel3000.com to learn more. And we want to take a moment this morning to recognize our own Danica Lewis for her efforts on these BU stories and her Time for Kids series. She's enjoying the morning off after the Dane County chapter of the National Alliance on Mental Illness presenting her with the Local Journalism Award last night at a ceremony. This is so exciting. We're so proud of her. These are really important stories that she's telling to help give parents expert advice on talking to your kids about mental health. So congratulations to her. Yeah, and this BU effort already off to a strong start. It's been great to see everyone, you know, getting involved and even our stories online. And I think Gary was yesterday. Gary so was yesterday, yeah. It just is fun to see what makes people themselves, you know, because you get to know, we're even learning more about ourselves too with this effort. Effort, and our so co-workers and is. Danica is the person behind all of this she's been working so hard so it's so nice to see her get some recognition for a this a lot of this time award. and effort going into this yeah, yeah. and a well-deserved morning off I hope she has no alarms set congrats to Danica all right well it is 622 right now today there's an opportunity for you to chat with city leaders about why after-school programs at your neighborhood center are important to your kids and Middleton residents are gonna be paying a higher utility fee to help clean up from this summer's historic flooding after last night's referendum passed. We'll have more on last night's election results when News 3 Now This Morning returns. A federal judge says Wisconsin's new administration can drop out of a lawsuit to repeal Obamacare. And for the first time in eight years, the city of Madison has a new mayor. How outgoing Mayor Paul Soglin will handle the transition and why the election of Satya Rhodes-Conway is one for the history books.
From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning and welcome to the final half hour of News 3 Now This Morning on this post-election Wednesday, April 3rd. Danica has the day off, so our very own Josh Breider joining me this morning. Yeah, good to be here. It's a good morning and hey, it's hump day, halfway through the week. We're getting there, but we got a lot to talk about. And first off, a beautiful sunrise out there this morning. We're going to start off Stunning. with some sunshine, which everyone's going to be happy of. Hattie's out on the Hattio patio with the latest. Good morning, Hads. Yeah, that sun will make you smile this morning. <laughs> it's a little chilly outside, but skies are clear. Take a live look from the Edgewater Sky Cam early this morning, and you'll see what I'm talking about. There's a view of the Capitol in the distance. Clear skies. Sun comes up in just a few minutes. Here's a look at weather track, which is satellite and radar combined. We don't have any cloud cover across the region. That little bit of snow that you see uh, just north of our viewing area is likely to continue to fall apart and track due east today. So no precipitation in our forecast, at least through the day. Now tonight, that's another story. Some rain returns to the region. Our current temperatures again below the freezing point here in Madison. 31 degrees, 31 as well in the Dells, 28 in Lone Rock and 28 as well in Prairie du Chien. Little cooler to the north that drops to 24 in Camp Douglas and it's down to 20 in Black River Falls. Should be a pretty quick warm up though through the morning through the 30s and 40s to around 50 by lunchtime. Now clouds return for the afternoon, so enjoy that sun early today. Highs will reach the mid 50s later on. Let's take a look at those traffic maps. We'll see if anything has changed this morning. Still looking pretty quiet. A few brake lights, but that's it. Showing up on Stoughton Road right around the Beltline. Otherwise, no major delays or accidents to tell you about. If you're heading in from the surrounding communities, looks like you're still going at posted speeds. All right, looking pretty good. Thank you, Hattie. You're welcome. 628 your time now. The city of Madison has a new mayor elect making history this morning. Satya Rhodes Conway defeated Mayor Paul Sagan with 62% of the vote, becoming the city's first openly gay mayor. Christina Laurie is live downtown with more on how they say they'll work together to move the city forward. Christina, good morning. Good morning. Mayor elect Rhodes Conway says making history was not the most important thing to her, but she knows just how much it means to others. Now, this was a campaign that stuck to the issues, something the incoming mayor says she's thankful for. She says her experience serving on the Madison Common Council for six years and her current role managing the mayor's innovation project, a think tank that works with mayors across the country, has prepared her for this new job. Some of the issues she advocated for specifically include affordable housing, improving transportation with rapid transit, addressing racial inequalities, and preparing for climate change. Outgoing Mayor Soglin ran on a similar platform, and both candidates stressed the importance of continuing that work moving forward. There are significant things we have done that need to be done in regards to opening up the workplace. And the city has set an excellent example and I'm sure the city will continue to do that. And I am full of hope for our city. Hope that we can be the equitable and sustainable city that we want to be, that we can be. The mayor elect says she thanked Mayor Soglin for his years of service to the city, 22 on and off, and asked her supporters to stay engaged with city government, even though the election is over, to hold both her and the city accountable. Now, uh, the new mayor will officially be sworn into office in two weeks, but the transition starts today. She will meet with the outgoing mayor, Paul Soglin, here at the city county building later this morning. Josh and Leah. All right, pretty historic day for Madison. Christina Lori reporting for us. Thank you, Christina. Madison isn't the only city with a new and historic mayor elect this morning. It was also a big night for Chicago voters. That city is now the largest city ever to elect an African American woman as its mayor. Lori Lightfoot won the vote last night, and she's also the first openly gay woman to win that seat. Lightfoot was a former corporate lawyer and ran on supporting the reform of the Chicago Police Department. This after an investigation by the Department of Justice found a pattern of excessive force and racial bias in that city. Back in Wisconsin, Judge Brian Hagedorn is declaring victory over Judge Lisa Neubauer this morning in a state Supreme Court race that's still too close to call. The Associated Press is reporting Judge Hagedorn does have a small lead with 99% of precincts reporting. Hagedorn's team again claiming victory this morning in a statement that says, quote, the people of Wisconsin have spoken and our margin of victory is insurmountable. He's ahead right now by about 15, 5,800 rather votes. Neither candidate took the stage last night, though spokespeople did address both crowds. Judge Neubauer's daughter talked about the possibility of a recount. 
We are absolutely committed to making sure that every single vote is counted. We need to make sure that the voice of every single Wisconsinite is heard. The race is within the margin for candidates to call for a recount. We will, of course, keep you updated on the status of that race as we learn more this morning. Women now officially run the Madison Metropolitan School Board after last night's election. Before the election, all three of those seats had been run by men. Christiana Carusi defeated Colleen Kerr with 52% of the vote. C4 was a runaway win for Ali Muldrow, easily defeating Dave Blaska with roughly 70% of the vote there. And for the fifth seat, which was the only seat with an incumbent seeking re-election, Ananda Murillette took a, a roughly 58% of the vote, ousting incumbent T.J. Mertz. A majority of Middleton voters are giving the go-ahead for more money to help their city recover from last summer's flooding. Over 75% of voters voted to pass a referendum that called for stormwater utility bills to triple to help fix all the damage to that system from last August. The cost to taxpayers will go from $15 to $45 annually for the next five years. The city estimates the flooding did about $5 million in damage to its stormwater management facilities alone. Developing right now, federal investigators are looking into whether the co-owner of a downtown Milwaukee strip club is involved in sex trafficking. Silk Exotic co-owner Ranavir Boosdom is accused of knowing women at another club he owns in Dodge County were being trafficked. A former manager at TNT Gentlemen's Club told the FBI he would tax Boosdom the nightly sales along with a separate amount the club made from trafficking. The former management or manager out rather also claims Boosdom knew about the prostitution because he would pay for sex with the dancers himself. No ch charges have been filed yet. A federal judge is letting Wisconsin drop out of two multi-state lawsuits trying to repeal Obamacare. Attorney General Josh Call filed to request that withdrawal after a Wisconsin judge repealed the law from the lame duck legislative session that would have required Call to get permission from lawmakers to settle those lawsuits. Both Call and Governor Ebers have made that withdrawing from that lawsuit a central campaign promise. Wisconsin is still part of an appeals process after a judge ruled the Affordable Care Act unconstitutional, but Ebers and Call say they hope to get the state out of that appeal as well. More local news at 6.33 this morning. You have another chance to help the city of Madison brainstorm the needs for neighborhood centers and youth programs. It's an effort to keep kids busy and out of trouble when there's no school. Tonight is the final community discussion happening at Goodwill Madison Northside. Right now, the city's development division is looking for your feedback on the upcoming funding process for the city's 15 currently funded centers and youth programming. That's scheduled to go from 6 to 7.30 today. Just into the Channel 3000 Alert Center this morning, if your morning commute takes you across the so-called hairball intersection at John Nolan Drive, Willie and Blair Streets, you're going to want to find a different route. The Madison Police Department is on scene right now, directing traffic around railroad crossing gates that are stuck in the downward position. Again, you should find a different route if you can. We will keep an eye on this as the morning continues. All right, still ahead here on News 3 Now this morning, Democrats are introducing a bill to allow dreamers to work on Capitol Hill. And today, state lawmakers are talking with farmers about how grant money and his budget proposal could help them reduce water pollution. That story is coming up next on News 3 Now this morning.
Welcome back at 637 <laughs> and we've got a great my morning photo to show you. <laughs> Kathy sent us this picture of some pelicans enjoying our area lakes. Look at them. Doesn't that just make you giggle? It does. I love, I love that them. Picture. You just got to make sure that if you're not like biking, sometimes they'll come at you if they're coming out of the water <laughs> and then they're dripping water down from them. So we were talking earlier about how this makes me want to kayak. You're going to have to get on the kayak with me this summer. Seriously. All lots right. to look forward to. Thanks for sharing your morning, Kathy. What does your morning look like? Take a picture, post it on our Facebook page, pages and use the hashtag my news three morning. We love these animal ones, by the way. <laughs> Danica, Josh, and I all share our favorites right here on the program. Okay, 6.38 your time now. Health officials from Madison and Dane County want to create a special task force to look into the chemicals that shut down a well on the city's east side. We're talking about well 15 near Truex Field. Investigators think increased levels of PFAS are the result of firefighting foams that have been used in that area for decades. Those levels do not exceed what's considered to be safe, but the well has been shut down out of precaution. That task force would be made up of someone who lives around well 15, a doctor, scientists, and other local leaders. The goal is to report back with some recommendations on how to protect that neighborhood and keep families updated with health advisories. Meanwhile, at the state capitol, lawmakers will hear from farmers and conservationists about water quality around Wisconsin. Governor Evers has made the issue a priority for his administration. His budget calls for borrowing nearly $70 million to fund grants for local governments that reduce stormwater runoff. That money would also provide grant money to farmers to reduce water pollution and loans for municipalities that need to replace lead pipes. This comes after a high number of private wells in southwestern Wisconsin tested positive for bacteria and lead. Also taking place at the Capitol today, the State Assembly will take a look at Governor Evers' plans for your child's school, the roads you drive on, and the health services we all rely on. This comes just days after an analysis found the governor will face a nearly $2 billion shortfall heading into his second year of his budget. Governor Evers is proposing a $1.4 billion investment in state-run education. That would include a complete overhaul of how public schools are funded. The budget also caps school voucher programs and invests millions of dollars into mental health services, English language programs, and special education. The governor's budget also includes $28 million for women's health care and calls for accepting federal Medicaid expansion funds. To cover transportation costs, the governor wants to raise the gas tax, something he claims will actually lower prices at the pump. All right, 640 is your time now on this Wednesday morning, and we are Ooh. taking advantage of that sunshine it's out there. It's gorgeous. Check out that sunrise. It is just a gorgeous morning out there. Yeah, you'll catch us by the windows taking pictures. We're hanging out in the mid-50s this afternoon before rain and showers. Maybe even some snow moves into the area. Hattie's got your first alert forecast coming up on News 3 Now this morning.
Welcome back at 643. There's an opportunity for any film or history enthusiast to learn about the Vietnam War's impact on Madisonians. This is pretty cool. The War at Home is an Oscar-nominated documentary that features historical footage capturing the anti-war movement in the 60s and 70s and the central role the UW-Madison campus played. The film includes more than 20 interviews with anti-war activists, eyewitnesses, university leaders, and police. It was first released in 1979 and has since been restored to 4K resolution. You can watch the documentary for free tonight at 7 at Union South. Afterward, there's going to be a question and answer session with one of the co-directors. Trending on Twitter this morning, the Department of Justice is reportedly warning Hollywood about trying to exclude Netflix films from the Oscars. Hmm. This comes after filmmaker and Academy board member Steven Spielberg planned to endorse some rule changes that would limit streaming services from being considered from the top honor. Most of those films pre premiere on the service or spend limited time in theaters. A justice official reportedly said the new rules would raise antitrust issues and potentially break federal competition law. I'm thinking somebody's a little worried about losing. I think so too. Mm -hmm. And trending out of Hollywood this morning, we're getting a look at the first poster for a new prequel film about the Joker. The Hangover director Todd Phillips and Joaquin Phoenix are putting their own stamp on the iconic Batman villain. Phoenix stars as a failed stand-up comedian named Arthur Fleck, who is driven insane and becomes the Joker. That's due out in early October. Already a lot of buzz on that this morning. Boy, I cannot see Joaquin Phoenix as anybody but Johnny Cash I in know. Walk the Line. That's going to be different. This is totally different. I mean, that's a little terrifying. That is a little terrifying. It's a way to wake up in the morning there, yeah. seeing that image. Something that's not too terrifying. Pretty decent Wednesday out there, right, Hattie? That's right. We have a beautiful sky cam shot this morning. Skies are clear, so enjoy the sunshine early today. It is that time of the year, though. We start to think about severe weather here in southern Wisconsin, and the National Weather Service is conducting their spotter training classes. If you're interested in learning more about severe weather or potentially becoming a spotter, the classes are free and open to the public. A couple coming up in our area tomorrow night in Darlington from 630 to 830. Then on Monday, there are two, one in the afternoon in Portage and one in the evening in in Columbus. If you want more information, all the details on locations, it's all on their website, weather.gov slash MKX. Now, no severe weather expected here today, but there is a risk for severe weather. Parts of northern Texas, western Oklahoma, again, well to our south. Things are still pretty quiet around here, but as the atmosphere begins to heat up, heading through spring towards summer, we'll see those chances for severe weather uh, again, of course, increase here across southern Wisconsin. Now, watching the radar map this morning, some light rain developing across Nebraska, parts of Missouri. That's the next storm system that's actually going to lift northward through the day today. So our rain chances will not actually arrive here in southern Wisconsin until tonight. But a little stormy through the midsection of the country from Omaha all the way down to San Antonio. Clouds with showers and thunderstorms. Improving conditions though along the east coast. Yesterday they dealt with a nor'easter, rainy and very windy conditions. Today sunshine near 70 in D.C. into the 60s in New York not going to be quite that warm here. Mid 50s across southern Wisconsin, but 60s, those yellow shaded areas, not too far to the south. A live look from the WIC, or no, this is the Edgewater Sky Cam actually looking at the Capitol. Skies are clear this morning. It's a little chilly outside, definitely colder than it was yesterday. 31 in Boscobel, down to 28 in Prairie du Chien. We're at 31 here in Madison, Janesville and Monroe, right at the freezing point at 32 degrees. Now, our future track forecast model says that we will have sunshine and southwesterly winds this morning. A quick warm up as well. Already back to around 50 by lunchtime today. But watch those clouds move in for the afternoon. So we're going to lose the sunshine with highs in the middle 50s. Looks like rain chances will hold off until after dark. So if you do have evening plans, should mainly stay dry. But rain moving into the area overnight. A few snowflakes will be possible on the northern side of that band of rain overnight. And as we head through the day on Thursday, on and off rain showers continue. So outside activities for tomorrow might be a little wet, especially through the evening hours. The rain will come to an end overnight tomorrow night. Highest amounts of precipitation accumulation right along the state line, where you could see around a half an inch possible. Here's a look at that extended forecast. Still on track to warm up for the weekend. I think it is going to be a little cloudier, though, here across southern Wisconsin Friday and even into Saturday. Saturday will be the dry day, though, with rain chances returning Sunday into Monday. Here's a look at our pet walk forecast. Oh. Oh, that was right on cue. <laughs> We're dog lovers over here, in case you can't tell. 
Oh, Link wants something. Link. <laughs> Link is ready for a walk. I think so. Today would be a great day for a walk, especially this morning. Yeah, Link, you get out there. Best. I support that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Addie. You're welcome. All right, stay with us. The morning sprint is up next right here on News for Now this morning. <laughs> It is 6.51, time for the morning sprint. Hattie says we will have a sunny afternoon, but you might need that umbrella later tonight. And Christina Laurie has a recap of a historic election as Madison welcomes its new mayor-elect. But first, Judge Brian Hagedorn is declaring victory over Judge Lisa Neubauer this morning in a state Supreme Court race that's still too close to call. The Associated Press is reporting Judge Hagedorn does have a small lead with 99% of precincts reporting. The race is within the margin for error for challenger Lisa Neubauer to call for a recount. We'll keep you updated over on channel3000.com. Madison has elected a new mayor with Satya Rhodes. 2% of the vote overnight. She'll become the city's first openly gay mayor during her victory speech. She said she hopes this proves to anyone <laughs> for being who they are that this is possible. Outgoing Mayor Soglin congratulated Rhodes Conway on her victory. Rhodes Conway will officially take office in two weeks, she says Soglin told her. He wants to get started on that transition right away. They're scheduled to meet later this morning. Christina, thank you. Another big question for voters yesterday, school referenda. In Sun Prairie, nearly 60% of voters agreed to borrow $164 million for a second high school to meet the city's growing population. Voters in DeForest voted to spend $125 million. That'll be split up to fund a new intermediate school, upgrades at the high school, and improving handicap accessibility. In Rock County, Milton schools will get a new pool and some school additions after voters approved a $60 million referendum last night. This comes after the previous two facilities referenda failed. 
Over in Clinton, it was a no from voters on a referendum to borrow $42 million for a new K-6 through building and to renovate the high school there. And the sun is up this morning. Skies are clear here across southern Wisconsin. Enjoy that sunshine early today. Temperatures are starting out at or just a little bit below the freezing point this morning. So a little bit of a chilly start. A nice warm up though through the day as temperatures quickly climb through the 30s and 40s. We're at highs in the mid 50s this afternoon with more clouds. Thank you, Hattie. In Washington, D.C., the House Judiciary Committee is expected to vote today on whether to subpoena Robert Mueller's full report on his investigation into Russia meddling in the 2016 presidential election. This comes after Attorney General Bill William Barr's summary said the special counsel did not establish the campaign conspired with Russia. Democrats fear Barr could use redactions to suppress evidence of potential misconduct by President Trump and his administration. As President Trump threatens to shut down the border with Mexico, Democrats will introduce a bill to allow DACA recipients to be able to work on Capitol Hill. Right now, law prohibits so-called dreamers who were brought into the U.S. illegally as children from being able to have paid internships and jobs in congressional offices in Washington. Presidential hopeful Senator Kamala Harris is one of the le leading back or leaders backing the American Dream Employment Act. Actresses Felicity Huffman and Lori Loughlin are set to appear before a judge today to face charges in an alleged college admissions scam. They are among a group of 11 wealthy parents accused of paying a college prep business to cheat on standardized tests or bribing coaches to get their kids into competitive schools. Today's hearing will be the first time Full House star Laughlin has publicly said anything significant about her role in the scheme. These troopers are just doing their job trying to protect everyone. How many times does this have to happen? How many more have to be hurt or killed? When is enough enough? That's Illinois State Police Director Brendan Kelly talking about the death of Trooper Brooke Jones' story. The 34-year-old was hit and killed on Thursday during a traffic stop. Officials say this is the 15th trooper struck this year because a driver didn't follow move-over laws. Funeral services for Jones' story will be held today at Warren High School near the Wisconsin border. A federal judge is letting Wisconsin drop out of two multi-state lawsuits trying to repeal Obamacare. Attorney General Josh Call filed the request to withdraw after a Wisconsin judge repealed the law from the lame duck legislative session that would have required Call to get permission from lawmakers to settle those lawsuits. Both Call and Governor Evers made withdrawing from that lawsuit a central campaign promise. Also at the Capitol, the State Assembly will take a look at Governor Evers' plans for your child's school, the roads you drive, and health services we all rely on. This comes just days after an analysis found the government governor will face a nearly $2 billion shortfall heading into the second year of his budget. Governor Evers is proposing an overhaul on how public schools are funded and investments in mental health services, ESL programs, and special education. If your morning commute takes you across the so-called hairball intersection at John Nolan Drive, Willie, and Blair Streets, you're going to want to find a different route this morning. The Madison Police Department is on scene right now, directing traffic around railroad crossing gates that are stuck in a downward position. We'll give you an update to that situation over on channel3000.com. Let's see how that might be affecting travel times this morning with Josh Tim. Good morning, Josh. Yeah, good morning, guys. John Nolan and Blair Street are both jammed up right now near that Willie Street intersection. You're definitely going to want to look for another route, looking at delays of at least 5 to 10 minutes. Uh, not sure how much time that will take to get fixed, so definitely plan ahead. Still looking good on the Beltline, though. Nothing major to slow you down. Just a few brake lights westbound near Stoughton Road. Front of road tapping the brakes between Highway PD and the Beltline in both directions. And other routes heading into Madison still moving at the usual speeds with no major crashes or issues. Your first alert traffic, I'm Josh Tim. All right, Josh, thank you. Ooh, and there's the view from the Edgewater Sky Cam this morning. Clear skies. Enjoy that sunshine early. Temperatures are a little cool early. We're in the 30s, but we'll climb to highs in the mid-50s this afternoon. More clouds moving in for the second part of the day and some rain in the forecast tonight into tomorrow. Loving that sun to start the day out, though. It sure is nice to look at. All right. Thank All right. you, Hattie, and thanks, Josh, for joining us this yeah, morning. Yeah, you bet, and thanks for joining us at home. Stay with News 3 now throughout the day. Have a great day.